Hey Clashers, welcome back to the channel. Beans Brigade here bringing you another Town Hall 13 meta video. This one is going to be on one of the most popular ones out there today. It is on the Yeti Smash. I'm sure all of you are aware of it. I've been seeing it a lot lately in the competitive circuit. You're seeing it in Legend Tax all the time. And it is one of the most, if not the most effective, ground strategy at Town Hall 12 right now. We're going to be looking at bases that it's good to use on and times when you should consider using it. Make sure you hit that like if you're new to the channel, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's jump right on into it. All right, so first attack here, we're gonna be checking out, guys. You can see that this one is using that four EQ, one jump approach. That is the common army comp used on this. We're gonna start out with a jump up top here and let's just break this down real quick and we'll show you guys what the aim is right here. That EQ is gonna be used on the core. You see with that jump up here at the top, it gives good access to that town hall compartment and the one right next to it. Well, the EQ is gonna be dropped right here on this CC section. You'll be able to reach all of that right there and open it up. And you can see the amount of value that is gained off of that. First off, town hall goes down. You've got an IT going down. You've got the scatter shot nearby. You've got another IT over here got the IT becoming in range once that comp nearby gets hit you got the Queen going down I mean this is just it's a beefy beefy kill squad so it's gonna get all that obviously you need the six Yetis that are going in there along with the bowlers behind and the heroes in there so let's just check it out you see it's gonna be started out with two Pekka's up there at the top just to get this funnel set it has the one hog coming in on that mortar there just so the mortar isn't directly targeting that seed, it's gonna drop as many whiz as possible. And that funnel's looking very solid there. Here come the Yetis in there. Six of them all together. Gonna have the healers right on top of them. Bowlers behind. Heroes right there with them. And an ice golem. And gonna let that ice golem go on the outside so that the royal champion has some tanking ahead of it when it gets dropped. It is gonna get dropped late on that 10 o'clock side. That's a great use of that is to take out these flank buildings that are not quite in the base. You see that EQ has opened up this base completely. And here in the middle, this IT right here is locking on right onto uh, one of the Yetis there. But it's actually going to help out. It's going to drop those Yeti Mites pretty fast. They're under rage and it's going to put the max amount of Yeti Mites out there from that Yeti uh, right away. So that is going to help out a lot putting damage on things. But just look at that KS guys. Funnel is all that you know is the most important part. You get all of that in and gonna just run straight through the base. I mean the Pekka still have Pekka's on the outside helping the tank. Did just pop that Royal Champion ability there. Got a lot of HP back and still has an ice golem over there that's coming around. I believe that's the ice golem from the Siege Barracks. And it is gonna help out. It'll be coming back around here soon. The Chaos is still doing work in the middle. Queen has her ability and is just absolutely wrecking there behind that Chaos. King is at 75% HP. Look at the Royal Champion coming along there on the side, just helping to take out all the flank defense. That is the that is the way to use the Royal Champion there. It can hop buildings, so it can really get to whatever you need. It doesn't have the most HP, so you really do want some tanking from some troops nearby, a KS or so, just to help it out. And this is exactly how you want these types of attacks to develop there, guys. Plenty of HP left on all of these heroes. Even that Royal Champion's got a bit. And uh, Queen isn't even going to need her use a, need to use her ability on this one. So, just an all-around great attack here from the of Erebos. Now, these guys in Erebos, uh, they are affiliated with Playmakers. They are some awesome attackers. I believe they are Greek clan. And these are the ones who are demonstrating the attacks for us this week. Appreciate Erebos for come, letting me come by and record. Alright, next up we have Graveyard here who's going to be coming at this base with the same strategy but a little bit less on that KS. You see it's two P.E.K.K.A.s already used, it's four P.E.K.K.A.s total. And this is so that he has some tanking ahead of those Yetis in there in the middle and is going to have a third P.E.K.K.A. coming in with that KS just ahead of these Yetis just to make sure they have plenty of offensive firepower to go in. The one jump gives access right to this compartment here. And as you can see as they're coming in, the EQ is going to be dropped right here on this center section and look how much that allows this KS to reach once it's dropped there. Huge, huge reach from that KS being there. 
um, the jump and the funnel are looking pretty good does have this royal champion over here being dropped it's gonna come in and come on that side and be able to clear a ton on its own it's gonna have a little bit of tank in there from a P.E.K.K.A it looks like potentially I think the P.E.K.K.A did get taken out but yes it will have plenty of tank and it will get plenty of value from over there so just have a look then let's see how this attack is gonna develop and just as they're coming in there has that Grand Warden ability popped as the few bowlers coming behind that Royal Champion up top, there goes the EQ. KS is going to keep it moving there. And just look at the Royal Champion up top doing work. Look at the KS doing work. Queen is going to move up towards 10 o'clock on her own. Easily gets that scatter shot taken out, which can be very, very lethal to large groups of troops. Just a huge amount of splash damage. And then that Siege Barracks does drop two Valks, a Pekka, and a Wiz there. And they're going to just come around and clean up on the edge and just a great great idea of having those CC troops in there. There's nothing that's going to take out those Valks. They're going to make it all the way to the end. And look at the KS. It's just absolutely wrecking. The Queen finally pops her ability there on the back end and will come back around and get these other few defenses cleared. And it's just all about overwhelming the defenses in the middle. Once you get those Yeti Mites in there, you get them under Rage. First off, the Yetis themselves have a ton of HP, which under Rage they're getting healed up by the healers. But as they take more damage, they're letting out more Yeti Mites, which do extra damage to defenses. And even more so when they're Raged up. That's just a potent combination here. I'm not sure if there's any way to really nerf this attack. We did see somewhat of a change recently with those Yeti Mites, but it was actually to their benefit with traps not targeting them anymore. So, pretty big deal there. But even before that nerf happened, they were still wrecking. So I'm not really sure if the Yeti meta is going anywhere at all, guys. So nice attack there from Graveyard once again. Let's move on to the next one. And this one is going to be a little bit different here, folks. We're used to seeing it with the EQ. And this, this one, we have three jumps instead. Now, starting out here with the Bowler Skip to set the funnel. I love seeing these clever Bowler Skips on the edge there. One right on that storage is the perfect way to get two buildings cleared. For the price of one and does have a pekka on the other side setting that up one jump coming right into town hall another jump going to the ea section and this is just a beautiful beautiful entry let's have a look at everything he's going to get here and obviously the ks is going to come in right here beautiful entry so far that funnel is is very very well set with the bk coming back inside he's coming over here but the biggest thing town hall gets cleared EA gets cleared, IT gets cleared, you've got another back end jump that's going to be dropped right over here on that town hall, or the CC that is, that's going to give back end access to this IT right here, but the most clever part of this attack for me, uh, from what I saw, is the way that this other back end section over here gets dealt with. We're going to show you guys exactly how it develops, but suffice to say that it involves the CC and the Royal Champion. So, let's keep it moving. Let's see what's going to happen on this. As the P.E.K.K.A. coming out on the side there, that's set the funnel up beautifully. One loon there in front of these healers just to make sure that there isn't any black air mines to potentially take one out at the start. Yetis are all going straight inside the base. Has the siege barracks down just as that P.E.K.K.A. gets taken out on the edge there. And this P.E.K.K.A. is going to drop a ton of wizards here. It's just going to be a good way to get that funnel started as that K.S. does work. Gets the town hall cleared. Had that ability pop just as the town hall is being cleared. Nice poison there. It covers that soft CC up very, very well. And just look at that KS being all together like that under Rage. So much DPS gets put out there. Royal Champion hasn't been used yet. You see that Siege Barracks down at 6 o'clock is just about to pop. And here we go. It's going to be Hogs and the Royal Champion coming in. The Wizards and that P.E.K.K.A. gave some really, really good tanking as they came in. And that KS over there at the 10 o'clock side is giving some tanking as well. Only needs one heal over on this side, and I really like this variant a lot, using these hogs on the edge. You see people help to beef up their, their chaos a little bit with the P.E.K.K.A.s on some of them or whatever else, but this was a great, great way to take out an entire side of the base with just the Royal Champion and hogs and one spell. Uh, you had to clear that side anyways and use the funneling from the Siege Machine there, or the Siege Barracks that is. Uh, just to kind of start things out, get some tanking ahead, and just look at everything that was grabbed there by that. Missed the Wiz Tower and that cannon here over on the 9 o'clock side. 
but you see those minions there are going to easily get that cannon. Queen is still alive and kicking, also still has her ability, and it's going to be pretty easy, pretty, pretty simple job to come and get these last few buildings cleared, and really just a great attack here. I can't say enough about these guys over in Erebos. Um, really, really solid attacks here that we've seen. Well, that is about it for this one, folks. I really appreciate you all coming out and checking my video. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the of the video. Let me know what you think of the Yeti meta at the moment, uh, where it's going. If you think it's going to get nerfed anytime soon, I think it's coming myself, but really hard to say. It is so effective, and it's. I believe it can be built against with the right strat, but it does leave the back end open to a lot of other things. So it's a lot to think about here, but. Once again, thank you so much to Erebus for letting me come in over there and record. Um, playmakers, these guys are going to be doing big things in the coming weeks. Make sure to keep an eye out for that as we see these Town Hall 13 tourneys coming on and that stuff. I'm going to be doing more content on these Town Hall 13 metas. Really hoping to see some type of update coming in the next few weeks. Maybe some type of balance, maybe some type of troop change. And we'll see if any Town Hall 13... Uh, you know, new troop gets dropped. We know that that Archer Tower meta is supposed to be dropped, or not the Et meta, but the Archer Tower update is supposed to be coming at some point. Obviously, they do have to upgrade those, and I think there's going to be a big troop change when that happens. Really looking forward to how that's going to change attacks and the way people build and uh, attack bases. So, once again, guys, for Playmakers Gaming, I really appreciate you watching the channel, and we will see you next time. Have a great one. Later.